Our blessed Lord Jesus, how wonderful it is to know Thee as our Savior and also to know Thee as our Lord. In the glory, seated at God's right hand, Thou art there the object for our hearts and for faith. And we thank You for this relationship we may enjoy now with Thee in the glory while we are here on this earth. We pray, bless these moments that we are together around Thy Word pray for thy blessing upon the Sunday school classes and upon everyone who is here and also upon our brothers and sisters who could not be with us this morning. We commit them all into thy tender care. We ask thy blessing for everyone when we open the scriptures, guide us through thy spirit and edify each one of us through thy grace and for thy name's sake. Amen. Amen. Well, this morning I have... um, an exercise to go through the book of Acts with you the whole book in 35 minutes perhaps so that's quite an effort but I want to focus on seven summary statements that Luke made and he made this book that's the second book that Luke wrote and if you count all the chapters that Luke wrote, he contributed the most to the New Testament. He wrote even more than Paul's 14 letters, if I may include Hebrews. And what is so striking with Luke's writings, he um, focused our attention on the Lord Jesus. Just give this example in Acts 1, verse 1. The former treatise or tract or really account have I made O Theophilus of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up so here is a summary of the gospels what the Lord Jesus did on this earth he began to do to act he began to teach but the implication is that the Lord Jesus is still doing that but now not on earth now from the glory because what you see in Acts 1 what happened in verse 9 when he had spoken these things he had given the program in verse 8 let's read verse 8 also but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth that is the Lord's program and that is elaborated in this whole book this whole book can be divided in these portions that are indicated here a witness for the Lord in Jerusalem in Judea in Samaria to the uttermost part of the earth and then comes verse 9 when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight so the Lord was taken up and he was received in heaven he went up because he could go up in his own strength just as he was he raised he was raised from the dead but he also rose himself it's not a contradiction and so as a man he was taken up but he could also ascend as he said in John 20 and then he was received in the glory and in Hebrews 5 we see that God saluted him God greeted him there so the book of Acts what is it all about? it is about the acts of the glorified Lord the Lord Jesus is now glorified at God's right hand because we know now what happened at the other side of the cloud he was received by this cloud that is the Shekinah glory he was transported to heaven but we know now through faith what happened there we see Jesus crowned with glory and honor Hebrews 2 verse 9 and from heaven he sent the Holy Spirit that's what you see in Acts 2 Acts 2 verse 1 when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting 
Verse 3, And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire, and it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. This is the Holy Spirit coming down, filling those twelve. Matthias was included. And they started to speak in tongues. That was a testimony. It was God's um, sign that a new work had started. And the result of this is then, or what happened is really uh, a little bit explained by Peter in this address. And what you see then as a result of the coming of the Holy Spirit, uh, we could speak about the glories of the Lord in Peter's address, but I will skip that for now. I just want to go with you to the end of chapter 2. There we see this new company of believers. They believed, they, they repented, they were baptized. And in verse 42, we see what they were doing. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, and breaking of bread, and in prayer. We often quote this verse, but this is where they started. And we still continue today in that same path. And you could find about ten features of these believers here in these few verses. But I want to go with you to verse 47, what they were doing. Praising God, having favor with all people. And now notice, and the Lord added to the church or to the assembly daily such as should be saved. This is the first summary statement that Luke makes. This is the conclusion of this event. The Holy Spirit came down from heaven, from the glorified Christ. And now realize this. The Messiah, who was rejected by his own people on this earth, was accepted in heaven, was crowned by God with glory and honor, sent the Holy Spirit from there, and the Holy Spirit was now dwelling in the believers on earth, and through the Holy Spirit, and through faith also, of course, they were linked now with the Lord in the glory, as a new fellowship, and this is therefore a real new beginning and this is then uh, summarized in this first statement there are seven summary statements in this book this is the first one the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved so the Lord in the glory rejected by his people on earth in Jerusalem they had cast him out they have let him out of the gate Hebrews 13 shows that he went outside. John, uh, John 19 also shows that the Lord was carrying his cross, went outside. The Lord was outside the gate because they rejected him. In this very scene where they rejected him, there is now this company of 3,000 souls that had been added on one day. The very place where he was rejected. Is that not great success? The rejected one has here a company of 3,000 souls added to him at that day. That is the triumph of God's grace. Where the Lord was rejected here, the same place he has now a company of the 120 that were there already in Acts 1, added the 3,000, so there are 3,120 at that moment. But then the Lord continued. Verse 47 says that the Lord added to the church daily so in that scene of his rejection your Jerusalem where the leaders had decided away with him crucify him and the crowds had cried shouted out in that very scene he has this company there that is evidence of a work of God and that is why we can call the acts of the apostles in reality we can call it the acts of the glorified Lord you can call it the acts of the Holy Spirit also. And so here we see the first stage of this tremendous work that the Lord started. And then we see in chapter 3, I'll just summarize that with you, this wonderful event that was this uh, paralyzed man. He was over 40 years old. We know that from chapter 4. And he was healed. How? Because he put his trust in what Peter said. You have to read the whole chapter. I just summarize it. But Peter then explained later to the crowd what happened. He was saved. 
because of the name the name we thought of the name this morning the name of the Lord Jesus who was rejected what does Peter say uh, in verse 16 Acts 3.16 and his name through faith in his name has made this man strong or whole whom you see and know so what Peter explains is this man believed and this at the same time when he believed the Lord was working through Peter that this man was healed and he stood up and he could jump if you read verse 11 or around yeah verse 11 as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's and they greatly wondering and so then people started to explain what had happened in verse 13 the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob it's not a strange God it was the God these Jews knew about the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus that is verse 13 servant would be better rendering than son and whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate and so on but the one he denied verse 14 is the holy one the just he was killed but he is the prince of life so Peter shows here how the Lord Jesus has acted in the healing of this paralytic this lame man was healed by the strength that came from the Lord in the glory the one that they had rejected he had acted and so he continues to speak about this and if you turn to chapter 4 verse 12 he makes an important conclusion he says then neither is there salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved the Lord had said to the disciples in John 14 verse 6 I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father but by me he is the only way and this is confirmed here he is the only name there is no other name so there is only salvation through him and this message was brought with great boldness and what did the leaders do they rejected this message they put Peter and John in prison the next day they put the twelve apostles in prison these were the Sadducees they didn't believe in the resurrection so they were most at that time at that moment the most who opposed to this message and then if you continue on in, verse, in, in chapter 5 you see the attack of the enemy we could call Acts also the book of the Acts of the enemy but at the same time what we're going to see in those seven uh, summary statements the Lord will always have the victory he will always have the victory and so the more the enemy works to counteract it really shows it brings out more of the strength of the Lord Jesus I'll give you another example then you understand what I'm saying the more Pharaoh opposed Moses in ex Exodus the more he opposed God the more God could reveal his power and his strength and that's exactly what happened here in the book of Acts the more these leaders the religious leaders rejected the Lord Jesus not only on earth but now also the one who is in heaven they rejected him still the more they did it the more the Lord Jesus showed his greatness in the book of uh, Acts chapter 5 we see another attack of the enemy now from the inside there are two believers Ananias and Sapphira they lied against the Holy Spirit and they were killed the same day when you go to chapter 6 you see another problem arises in the midst of the believers when they were multiplied the disciples were multiplied there arose murmuring uh, there was a misunderstanding the widows of the Hebrews uh, they were treated better they thought than the widows of the Hellenistic Jews and we find in the same chapter the solution that apostles had great wisdom to have the whole multitude choose these seven deacons and the whole problem was solved here we see the heavenly wisdom acting through the apostles and the enemy was opposed he could not continue 
But he did still continue. If you go to chapter 7, excuse me, I just want to go to the second uh, summary statement. I'm sorry. Verse uh, 7. Acts 6, verse 7. So I repeat, Acts 6, verse 7. Then we have the second summary statement of Luke. Despite all this uh, opposition, what do we see? In verse 7, the word of God increased. It was growing. That means more got saved. That's how this word was growing. There was an impact. And the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. And it says, greatly. So they multiplied greatly. And now notice, a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. The priests were all Sadducees. You have to know that. But I'll just tell you that for now. The priests were all Sadducees. They were the ones who rejected Peter's message. And what do we see here? Even from that company, the Lord saved a lot. A great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now, you tell me, is that not victory? That is the victory the Lord had from acting from the glory... And here is this tremendous victory that the Lord had, despite all the opposition, despite all the enemy was doing through the religious leaders, and even trying to corrupt from the inside. Here we see who is really in control. It is the Lord himself in the glory. And then we see from that moment on how this opposition of the religious world increased, even to the point that now also the Pharisees get involved. Because the opposition that we see with Stephen is not only the Sadducees, now also the Pharisees get involved. And what we see now, the two factions, the Sadducees and the the Pharisees, who are always opposed to one another, they are now united in their attack to get rid of Stephen. You read chapter 7, and when you come to the conclusion, it is very solemn. God wanted to reach out to his whole Nation, although they had rejected the Messiah. And this healing of the uh, paralyzed man in Acts 3 was like an object lesson. God was saying to them, you know, what happened to this man, I want this to happen to all of you, even to the people who, do, who are not paralyzed, but they are spiritually paralyzed. I want them all to walk before God and to really praise God. But they rejected that message. And here we see how Uh, Stephen summarizes that in Acts 7 how he says in verse 51 ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart they were circumcised the eighth day according to Jewish law but they were uncircumcised in heart and ears they didn't want to listen ye do always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did so do ye also Verse 52, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now become betrayers and murderers. So he makes very clear that they were guilty of having rejected the Messiah. But what is so solemn, here they were now also rejecting the Messiah from heaven. He gave them a second chance. We don't believe in a second chance that once you have rejected the gospel and you die there is no second chance but here in God's ways there was a second chance for the nation of Israel they had rejected their Messiah on earth now God had given them a second chance to accept the Messiah acting from heaven and they rejected him again and that is the solemn conclusion of Act 7 when they got rid of Stephen, the religious leaders, Sadducees and Pharisees, together got rid of Stephen. And that closes that chapter. Now God closes this uh, outreach. The whole nation is under judgment. What happened afterwards are two things. First of all, God's grace reaches out beyond Jerusalem, chapter 8. And he is also going to draw out of this nation that is now under God's judgment even individuals like Saul of Tarsus. With the young people we read yesterday, Acts 9, 
the conversion of Saul of Tarsus it is so impressive to study that chapter and to see how the Lord was acting but he could not do that towards the whole nation anymore they had rejected this completely and yet in God's grace he reaches out to individuals like Saul of Tarsus and he got saved this is how God goes on the Lord in the glory he continues that work despite the rejection and we see that he uses that rejection to bring those believers to other places Acts chapter 8 verse 1 Saul was consenting unto his Stephen's death and at that time there was great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem they were all scattered but what you see then those who were scattered started to preach first in Samaria and Philip is used in a very special way in Acts 8 and then we find in Acts 9 how the great persecutor himself gets saved I mean this is the miracle of God's grace and that shows again the victory that the Lord has to take the greatest opponent Saul and turn him around he is totally transformed you see that in Acts 9 and many other scriptures that is how the Lord is at work here in the book of Acts and the same Lord is still at work today he may be limited because of man's failure and because of the history of the church but the same resources are at work the same Holy Spirit is at work the same Lord in the glory is still at work today everyone here who is a believer is the evidence of the fact that the Lord from the glory is at work even today and more get saved you will see that later in this book so when you go to chapter 9 verse 31 you see the third summary statement that Luke makes and it is very interesting uh, Acts 9 verse 31 then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit they were multiplied there are many details at least seven or eight points that we could elaborate on in this verse but just see the context now the great opponent the great enemy he becomes the greatest servant and there is great comfort and uh, all the churches but you could also read the church there is the unity all these churches all these assemblies together form one church and they are marked by peace they have peace now or the King James says rest they are being built up and they were uh, going on in the fear of the Lord walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit and they were multiplied so there is also the thought that other uh, souls were still being added so the churches were strengthened they were comforted by the Holy Spirit and on top of that other souls were added that is how the Lord works from the glory that is his victory the greatest opponent had become a servant that is wonderful victory and so it goes on when you see in chapter uh, 10 you see how Peter then is used to open the kingdom of heaven for the Gentiles in Acts 10 you find how Cornelius is prepared and then Peter is received there and when Peter gives this wonderful message about the Lord's uh, uh, ministry on this earth then all of a sudden the Holy Spirit falls upon these believers they, they become they repent they become believers and the Holy Spirit comes upon them they are baptized just a little parenthesis the order of these events is always different so Acts 2 gives a different order Acts 8 gives a different order Acts 10 gives a different order Acts 19 again different order what happened to Paul if you analyze all the details there was again a different order so we cannot establish an order from one of these chapters the order that applies to us today is you repent you believe you receive the Holy Spirit and then you get baptized that is very similar to what happened in Acts 10 just a little parenthesis but I want to continue this line that Luke draws through this book to show the victory that the Lord Jesus had is this not tremendous victory a whole Gentile household is saved there and they become devoted believers and others are added and then when you go to chapter 11 
They even go to um, Antioch in Syria. That was way further. Uh, chapter 10 is in Caesarea. That was the, where the Roman occupation had their headquarters. But when you go to Acts 11, you go to Antioch, that is uh, way north in Syria. And there is then this wonderful <coughs> result that many uh, get saved uh, in verse 21, Acts 11:21. The hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. Then tidings of these things came to the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas, and he should go as far as Antioch. Much could be said about that. You read that chapter. It is a wonderful summary. How there is now the first, what we call Gentile assembly. There were also Jewish believers, probably. And uh, I don't want to go into these details now. We don't have time for that. But this is the triumph of God's grace. There in the Gentile world is now an assembly linked with the Lord Jesus in heaven. And when you go to chapter 12 then, the same apostle who had opened the door for the Gentiles in Acts 10 is now put to prison. There again you see the work of the enemy. But then he is released from prison. It's a very interesting chapter. And you see at the end how there is this force summary statement in Acts 12 verse 24 and 25 there you see just after this wicked king Herod Agrippa I was killed by the angel of the Lord and the angel of the Lord who had released Peter from prison here we see in verse 23 the angel of the Lord smote this wicked king because he gave not God the glory he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. But then the summary statement, this is the fourth summary statement, but the word of God, notice, but the word of God grew and multiplied. There was tremendous increase. We have seen that. This is a summary statement. And so the Lord had victory upon victory despite all the efforts of the enemy. And that's still the case today. You could give many examples how people uh, get saved despite the tremendous efforts of the enemy uh, to stop a work of the Spirit of God. Now when we go to chapter 13 and 14, you see then how this apostle of the Gentiles, Paul, starts his first missionary journey with Barnabas. There is a tremendous harvest in the Jewish world, but also in the Gentile world. At the same time, tremendous opposition among the Jews also among the Gentiles I cannot go into the details you can read chapter 13 and 14 you see that there's a tremendous harvest tremendous opposition and not only that if you go to chapter 15 you see how there is an opposition from the inside the Judaizers here is how the enemy always opposes God's work either using elements from the outside or here elements from the inside that is a very sad story but again there is victory in Acts 15 we see how the wisdom of God led the apostles and the whole assembly to make the right decisions and then if you go with me to chapter 16 even after the breakdown of the relationship between Barnabas and, and Paul we see how Paul took then uh, Silas with him and then also Timothy that's the second missionary journey and then we have a wonderful summary statement after all these things all this opposition we see then in chapter 16 verse 5 so that is the fifth summary statement so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily isn't that wonderful it's unbelievable here we see how the Lord from the glory continued to work. The churches, the assemblies were established. Just uh, an application for us. That's what we need. We need to be established. We need to be um, firmed, uh, confirmed in the truth. So that we know where we stand on solid ground, on a true foundation. That we are not swayed by evil uh, wind of doctrine. But that we stand firm. This is what we find here not only stand firm they were also strengthened inwardly 
And not only that, they were they increased in numbers even daily. Do we reach out so that others get saved? This is the work of the Lord from the glory, and as I said, He's still working today. Now, when we follow chapter 16 and 17, we see Paul on a second missionary journey, and there he goes to Europe, and there is a tremendous harvest in Philippi, this whole family of Lydia, and then the, the, uh, the jailer and his family, and then in chapter 17, we see the work in Thessalonica, we see the work in Berea, there's tremendous opposition, and then in Athens, there is opposition of the philosophers, and then Paul comes to uh, Corinth in chapter 18 there's a tremendous harvest just read verse 9 Acts 18 verse 9 then spoke the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for I am with thee no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for I have much people in this city the Lord had a plan to save many people that was a city of 600,000 people at that time there were many Slaves. There were many, uh, I mean, they were all pagan uh, idolaters. They were involved in so many uh, gross sins, as we know from other scriptures and also from history. There, the Lord was going to have a great harvest. Today, in cities like Toronto, New York, God's going to have a great harvest. But there is one difference. We are now at the end of the dispensation of grace. Here we are at the beginning. So we cannot just transfer... Act, uh, everything literally to this day. The Lord may work in different ways because we are now standing after 2,000 years of history and failure. But it is the same Lord who works, the, the same Spirit who works, the same Word of God that is at work. And then after that in chapter 19 we see Paul on his third missionary journey. And then he comes to Ephesus. And in chapter 19 we find the six summary statement if you see that Ephesus was the center of occultism in, the, in Turkey in, in Asia Minor at that time we see that there the Lord has the greatest victory to give you an example uh, in Acts 19 uh, Paul was uh, speaking there in the school of Tyrannus so first in the synagogue the Jews rejected the message he had to go out of there then he uh, studied daily in the school of Tyrannus for two years verse 10 and it says all they that dwelt in Asia heard that is Asia Minor where Ephesus was the capital they heard the word of the Lord Jesus both Jews and Greeks and God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul verse 12 so that from his body were brought into the sick handkerchiefs or aprons and the disease departed from them and evil spirits went out from them and then the enemy comes in and tries to imitate if he cannot counteract by uh, violence by opposition he will try to uh, infiltrate and or to imitate we see that all the time in the book of Acts and that was then uh, dealt with and as a result of that we read in verse 17 this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified verse 18 and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds verse 19 many of them also which used curious arts brought their books together and burned them before all men they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver tremendous work of God and here we find now the sixth summary statement in verse 20 so mightily grew the word of God and prevailed it was made strong it had the victory over all the powers of the enemy this is how the Lord is in control the word might in verse 20 it, the, the, it grew mightily but we could say this the might of the Lord the control he is in control through the word of God and there was an increase and it was made strong it's a tremendous victory and then we see how this great apostle went back to Jerusalem was, became a prisoner it is very interesting to read chapter 19, 20, 21 and so on he became a prisoner and all kind of things happened 
And then the Lord showed him very clearly in Acts 23 that he had to go to uh, to uh, Rome. Verse 23, uh, excuse me, Acts 23, verse 11. The night following, the Lord stood by him and said, "Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me in Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome." Now, when you turn to chapter 28, you see that there is where he arrived after a long time so we are about five years now excuse me uh, about three years after he was uh, there imprisoned in Jerusalem at least three years maybe three and a half now he is a ha- another uh, number of months for this journey so probably four years are uh, passed now and in Acts 28 he arrives there in Rome you would say that is defeat there is now this mighty apostle and he is there in chains as a prisoner what is he doing and we see in verse 23 uh, when they had appointed him a day there came many of uh, to him in his lodging to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God to he set forth the truth he solemnly witnessed of the kingdom of God that is of the Lord's rights the Lord in the glory he has all rights all authority that's implied with the expression the kingdom of God an expression we have seven times in this book persuading them concerning Jesus both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening he was doing here the same things the Lord did to the two disciples of Emmaus some believed verse 24 and some believed not and then we see the last summary statement of this book so we are almost done in verse 21 uh, excuse me 30 and 31 so Acts 28 verse 30 Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him now you read Philippians and you see that this poor prisoner this great apostle now a prisoner he reached people he would never have reached here we see God's work how the Lord used the fact that Paul was there as a prisoner he could now reach out to the imperial guard uh, of Nero there were many of, of, the, of that guard who got saved and their families and many we know from Philippians 1 who got saved and also other New Testament scriptures bear that out and what do we see in verse 31 this is the seventh summary statement verse 30 and 31 now read verse 31 preaching the kingdom of God so here's Paul's ministry he is a herald he presents the kingdom of God and notice again this is connected with the Lord as he is now in the glory to me have been given all authority in heaven and on earth Uh, 1 Peter 3.23 says that, that he has all authority even over angels over the whole universe this is preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ he's presenting a person the Lord Jesus Christ we will need the whole eternity to discover more of this great person and he does it with all confidence and what does it say no man forbidding him no hindrance who is in control it's the Lord in the glory he led Paul here at this moment these two years to have this ministry there's where the letter to Ephesians was written the letter to Philipp, the Philippians to the Colossians to Philemon to the Hebrews it's amazing there is how the Lord is at work now I want to close with this seventh summary statement here we see how the Lord acts from the glory and the lesson for us and that's a great encouragement today the Lord is working in your life in my life in many more lives what is pleasing to him he wants us to be a vessel for himself wherever we are in what situation he wants to use us of course we are not like the apostle Paul who would dare to compare himself with the apostle Paul but there is a parallel in this sense that as he was an instrument willing to submit to the master we may be an instrument for the master's use is that your desire to be an instrument for the master's use that's my desire we fail we fall short but he will have the victory so may we commit ourselves to him can we just pray 
Lord Jesus, we thank thee for this book of Acts where we see how thou hast the victory working from the glory and thou art now in the glory working through thy spirit also in our lives and we ex- anticipate the day of thy coming Lord Jesus to usher us into this wonderful glory where thou art now and we have already access through the spirit and through faith already now to see thee there and at the same time we may represent thee here in this scene the scene of thy rejection we may represent thee here as thy disciples Lord Jesus help us to be a vessel fit for the master's use to honor thee to glorify thee in whatever we do and say to seek thy interests help us to be thy representatives till thou wilt come to bring us to the glory and when we meet unbelievers help us to be a witness help us to learn from the examples we saw in the book of Acts and so we commit ourselves into thy tender care we thank thee for thy love for thy grace and we bless thee and through thee we bless our God and Father Amen Amen